Hello everyone and welcome to the Digital Preservation Workshop, where we will discuss the steps and best practices for archiving your photos and home movies. Although personal archiving is a relatively new concept, archiving or preserving your personal effects is incredibly important for understanding our history, both within our family and for our community. Your photographs and home movies are very important to family members, and even if no one is currently taking an interest in them, a future family member most certainly will. Your photographs and home movies are also important historical materials. They not only document your family, but the traditions, values, and landscapes of a place and its people at a snapshot in time. As such, we invite you to share your digital files with the library's online local history collection, OC Stories, where they can be appreciated by the larger OC community. OC Stories celebrates Orange County's rich cultural diversity by documenting its historical events, people, businesses, and institutions with help from people like you. When you share with OC Stories, you retain all ownership rights to your photos and home movies, and you add to the richness that is OC history. To learn more or check out your community's stories, go to ocstories.org. By the end of this workshop, you will have the skills needed to start your photo and home movie preservation journey. We will first go over photo preservation and then cover home movie preservation. So let's get started. Preserving photos. We will go over inventory, storage, file formats, file names, and file descriptions. Preservation is an ongoing process. Designing what photographs and documents to save can be the hardest part of digital preservation of photos. Taking inventory and spending extra time in the beginning will make preservation easier in the end. Explore what you have, then decide what you want to save. You may have photos and documents in a variety of places. Make a list of all the locations where you store photos. It may be a camera, phone, social media account, shoebox, and so on. Once you have made your list, embark on an exploration journey to go through them. Look at what you have and make some decisions about which photos you'd like to keep. Do you have doubles or some bad shots? Take this moment to get rid of them. Storage is important for the usability and findability of your photos. If at all possible, you should save your photos in two separate geographic locations in case of a massive data loss, like a fire or flood, and on two separate storage devices in case of any malfunctions. Once you have chosen your two storage areas, check on your files once a year to make sure your storage choice is still accessible and working. Always keep your originals. Social media sites seem like a convenient place to store photos, but you must use caution when using social media to preserve and store your photographs. Social media sites do not store photo file names or file descriptions, which are important pieces of information when preserving photos. We will talk more about file names and descriptions in a moment. Social media sites also automatically compress the file size of photos, making this not the best option for long-term storage. The Society of Georgia Archivists recommend the three following storage options, cloud storage, external storage, and personal storage servers. Cloud storage sites store your photos and documents in servers that belong to someone else. For example, Google Drive, Dropbox, and iCloud. Any photos you store in cloud storage are managed by the respective company of your choice. Three advantages of this choice include the ability to sync data from multiple devices on the go, they have built-in backup and recovery data services, and it is an inexpensive form of storage if you only require small amounts of data. The disadvantages are that there may be restrictions around which files you can upload. Companies might shut down with short notice, and you have to read the security and privacy clauses to ensure it is what you agree with. If choosing cloud storage, be sure that you select one that allows your file names and descriptions to stay with your files. External storage stores data from multiple devices on a separate outside device. For example, external hard drives and USB flash drives. Of these, external hard drives are the best choice. They are sturdy and can store larger amounts of data in one place. The advantages of external storages as a whole is that you don't have a minimum storage capacity. For example, if you purchase a 2 terabyte external hard drive, you own 2 terabytes worth of space. This makes external storages less expensive than cloud storages if you have a lot of photos. The disadvantage is that external storages can be damaged, and your data may rot or decay over time, which is why it is important to check your storage locations at least once a year and store your files in at least two storage options. This is the recommended storage option when using the OC Memory Lab. Personal storage servers provide network service and centralized access to data. They tend to be more expensive, but they provide intercompatibility and are optimized for different workloads. 
They can be located in your home or in a cloud network. If you have a photography or other small business, this might be your best choice. The advantages is that they provide privacy and security and you can access your files remotely. The disadvantage is that you need to know how to manage the server software and hardware. They are also on the pricier side and they require maintenance. When it comes to storage, the most important thing to remember is that you should choose two separate and different storage options and you should check on them at least once a year. Now let's talk about file formats. The format you use to save your files is very important. If at all possible, you should always opt to save your files in the highest resolution available. Here are the four Library of Congress recommended file formats. The top recommended choice is TIFF. A close second is JPEG 2000. Both of these formats are what they call lossless formats, meaning they don't lose resolution or quality when compressed or uncompressed. If neither TIFF nor JPEG 2000 are available, then opt for using PNG. There's some resolution and quality loss when compressed, but it's still a large enough file to maintain your image quality. The last option of those recommended is JPEG. It's a smaller file size, good for if you don't have a lot of storage space. Now that we know which format to use to save our photos, let's go over file names. This one is simple. There are two tips. Tip one, be obvious. Tip two, be consistent. File naming is important. You don't wanna lose your files because you're not able to find them because you can't remember their name. We've all been there and it's not a fun place to be. Keep in mind that if you don't understand the name, you won't remember it. Here is our recommended file naming convention. Four digit year, followed by two digit month, followed by two digit day, underscore, series title, underscore, the number in the series. Include as much information as you can. Here's an example. In the photo you see that someone is walking into the library. The title tells us it's 1957, San Clemente Library, number three. So with this we know there's also a one and two in the series. You can get more specific as well by adding to the series title. For example, if this was a story time visit, then you can write 1957 San Clemente Library story time visit, number three. The file name should help paint a snapshot of when and what is going on. The rest of the story is written in the file description. As you may have guessed, file descriptions or metadata is very important and a must for preservation. Memory is a fleeting thing and the information surrounding a photograph we shot in 1995 might not be what our mind has retained. Some metadata is already in your images, but you need to add more. The information that is already there is machine added. Machine added data usually includes the date the file was created, locations, and what was used to create it. In order to paint the full picture of what is going on in an image, you have to add your own file descriptions, human added. In your file description, you should include the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Here's an example using a make-believe scenario. Susie, Jed's grandmother, is seen reading to Jed in the photograph. The photograph was taken in Susie's living room during her 50th birthday celebration. Susie's house resides in the city of La Palma. The photograph was taken by Roberto using his cell phone. Roberto is Jed's father and Susie's son-in-law. As you can see, the file name with the file description work together to tell the whole story. For those who look at the photograph a week after the celebration, and those who look at the photograph 23 years later. Now let's transition to talking about preserving home movies. You'll notice there is plenty of overlap. Here are the steps we will cover. Identification, assessment, storage, file names, and file descriptions. Let's jump right in. Identification is where you need to identify what you have, where you have it, and what formats they are in. Inheritors of home movies typically find themselves with a large quantity of unlabeled film and videotapes. Before you embark on digitizing, you should take a moment to preview your collection so that you can note the content, identify the footage of most significance to you, and arrive at a plan for both access and preservation needs. You need to find out what formats you have. This will help you determine where you can preview your home movies. The video formats for film that OC Memory Lab accepts are 8mm and Super 8mm. You can tell what you have as film because typically it is on a reel and has perforations or perfs which are holes along the edges and there will usually be an image on the film that you can see by holding it up to the light. Pictured here is the 8mm and Super 8mm film. The video formats for videotapes that the OC Memory Lab accepts are VHS, DV, 
digital video, and mini DV. VHS you're probably used to seeing for commercial movies. Here's a picture of it. There are also a lot of home movies that were recorded onto VHS. Pictured here are DV and mini DV. Your home movies might be in one of these two formats. For a complete list of accepted formats, visit ocpl.org slash ocmemorylab. Assessment goes hand in hand with identification, but it focuses on different parameters. In assessment, you are being asked to rate the condition of your home movies. While assessing, you are looking for three things. Is your footage degraded? Has there been damage from storage? Or has there been damage from viewing? Let's go over these in more detail. First up, footage degradation or decay in film and videotapes. Most film decay has a vinegary odor and it is usually referred to as vinegar syndrome. This syndrome causes your film to shrink, warp, and become brittle. Your other non-smelly films can catch this syndrome. If you have a film that smells especially vinegary, like sticking your nose into a freshly opened bag of salt and vinegar chips, then keep that film away from your other films and put it on top of your two copy list. Here's a closer look at vinegar syndrome. As you can see, the film has shrunk and warped. The main way videotape degrades is called sticky shed syndrome. The best way to tell if your video suffers from this is if it makes screeching noises in the VCR, or if you see a lot of snow or static in the image when playing back. If you see this, stop immediately and take to a professional. Here's an example of what that looks like. Please note that this can be a regular dropout and is pretty normal, but if you see this type of snow for longer than a second and is covering up the majority of the image behind it, you should stop your tape as you might have sticky shed syndrome, especially if the deck is making screeching noises or other than usual sounds. Damage from storage. Both film and videotape suffer from mold. If this is something you see, bag it up and take it to a professional because it is unhealthy to breathe it in. The main culprit for mold is poor storage. We will go over proper storage in our next section. For both mold and vinegar syndrome, please note that you should not store the affected home movies in a bag for long. While it will prevent the spread, it will make the home movies suffering the degradation worse if stored this way for a long time. Remember, take to a professional as soon as possible. Damage from viewing. Projecting your films and playing back your videotapes can damage them, especially if your home movie is decayed and or your machine has not been recently serviced. So be careful to assess the condition and be sure to only play them on equipment that is properly serviced. So now that we know your home movie's condition as well as the content and format, it's time to prioritize. All of this information that you have gathered will help you make the decision of what to preserve and digitize first. For example, we recommend that you work on videotapes that hold important content before important films, as magnetic tape has a shorter life expectancy than film, even though film is usually older, unless your important films are extremely degraded in the ways we have mentioned. But you make the final decision on what to work on first by considering what you have, what condition it is in, and what content is worth saving the most to you. As with photos, it is extremely important to always keep your original home movies, especially your most cherished ones. And you want to store your digital copies in at least two locations, plus check your files at least once a year. Since we covered this section in the photo preservation portion of this workshop, we'll focus on properly storing your originals here. Proper storage is vital for the preservation of your originals. Store your originals in a cool, dry environment, protected from high humidity and direct sunlight not basements or attics, a closet is usually best, and off the floor ideally. Put them in a container that allows them to breathe. For film, you can purchase vented cans. For videotapes, ideally a sturdy archival box will work. Do not store inside plastic bags or with rubber bands around them. Try not to put too much weight on top of them either. Film should be stored flat. Videotapes should be stored vertically, like books. File naming is important because you want to be able to locate your files. Again, this one's simple. There are two tips. Tip one, be obvious. Tip two, be consistent. Our recommended file naming convention for home movies is the same as the photos. Four digit year, two digit month, two digit day, underscore, series title, underscore, number in the series. Include as much information as you can. Here's an example. This video is from 2011. The History of Los Amigos, Orange County, number one. The file name should help paint a snapshot of when and what is going on. 
The rest of the story is written in the file descriptions. In your file description, you want to include the human added components, the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Here's an example using a make-believe scenario. Patty and her husband Tony walk across the park in Anaheim Hills with their dog, Marshmallow. They are both on a one-week vacation from work and decided to visit a different park each day. The video was recorded on Patty's phone on a tripod. As you can see, the file name, which is 2018, One Week Park Adventure, number four, and the file description work together to tell the whole story, whether that be for family and friends or the greater OC community. That brings us to the end of our workshop. Documenting and preserving is a wonderful family activity and an ongoing process. We invite you to check our website for more learning opportunities at ocpl.org slash ocmemorylab. Please take a moment to complete the following short survey. We value your feedback and look forward to your comments. Thank you for being here, and we hope to see you soon at the OC Memory Lab.